Mario Kart 8! This video is everything you need to know to win in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. From the controls and how to drive, all the way to optimized shortcuts and item strategy. There will be time codes in the description, but I recommend watching every portion as you will most likely learn something new. I usually upload online races where I try to explain what I'm doing, but there just isn't enough time to go into full detail. This guide will explain literally everything that I do to help me win races, and by the end, you'll find yourself winning some too. Let's get started. If you just started playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you may have been picking whatever looks good or maximizing the speed stat. Let's clear up which parts you should be picking. This topic goes deep, but we will keep it simple. For beginners, the best combo is any baby character, plus the Biddy Buggy or Mr. Scooty, Roller Tires, and Cloud Glider or Paper Glider. Some of these are randomly unlocked by collecting coins. If you haven't unlocked them yet, you can go with Baby Mario, Streetle, Roller, and Parachute, or any combo that you like the look of and has similar stats. You can press the plus or minus button to see your stats. What we're going for here is high acceleration, handling, and mini turbo. Acceleration is how quickly you can get back to full speed after stopping, which is very important after getting hit by an item or driving off the track. Handling helps you turn better, which is crucial until you have all the track layouts memorized. You may have noticed your speed stat is really low, but the hidden mini turbo stat is how you will go fast and win. And surprisingly, the mini turbo stat is more important than the speed stat for trying to go fast. I'll explain this more soon and even more in depth later on in this guide because this goes deep, but I will fully explain what all these stats mean and how important each one is. For now, all you have to know is that this is a very solid combo and the best one if you are just starting. Or you can try out the most popular combo in the game at the time of making this video, which is Yoshi, Teddy Buggy, Roller, and Paper Glider. This combo has more speed and less handling, which is going to be tougher to control for beginners. For now, I'm going to advise against going for a high speed combo. This is because not only is it probably worse, you will have a much harder time improving at this game. The higher speed combos have lower mini turbo, and mini turbo is one of the most important mechanics to master in this game. You can try to improve with a fast combo, but I would not recommend it. And lastly, look out for this icon under a bike. Most bikes have this other icon, but if you see this one, you have chosen an inward drifting bike. These five bikes have inward drift, and they operate differently from most vehicles which have outward drift. I have already made a video covering the differences between them linked in the description. In this guide, we will be covering outward drift because it is what I recommend you choose. But everything that I say from now on will be true for both drifting styles unless I specify otherwise. While you have the stat screen open, you'll want to toggle smart steering off, motion controls off, and auto accelerate off. Smart steering is an option that lets the game turn for you to avoid going off the track. This sounds great, but it can prevent you from taking shortcuts, it's sometimes very unpredictable, and it slows you down when it activates. This is for total noobs, and sometimes Mario Kart pros. But our goal today is to learn how to drive properly, so of course we will not need smart steering. Motion controls lets you tilt your controller left and right to turn, but it's far easier and more precise to use your controller's left stick. Auto Accelerate just holds down the A button for you, which is kind of convenient I guess, but you can't ever stop or slow down if you have to. So just turn all of these off and I will go into more detail later on in the guide because they are important to touch on for high level play. The first track in this game, Mario Kart Stadium, is a great track to learn all the mechanics. We'll start off very simple with the controls. Hold the A button to go forward and the B button to slow down or reverse. At the start of a race, as the numbers go down, you can get what's called a startup boost by holding A at the correct timing. You want to start holding A the moment the number 2 has stopped moving. If done correctly, this will give you the maximum length startup boost. If you start holding A too late, you will get a shorter startup boost, which is not too bad. But if you start holding A too early, you will get a burnout. This is really bad, so if you think you're going to burn out, let go of A for a split second and just keep holding A again after that. Then you'll probably get a decent startup boost. Keep holding the A button as you drive. Use the left stick to move left and right, and you do not need to hold forward to go forward. You'll want to stay on the main road as going into the off-road, in this case grass, will slow you down. But if you have a mushroom as your item, you can activate it to move quickly, including through the grass, in order to take shortcuts. Press the L or ZL button to activate your item. If you don't have an item, you will do a cute little horn honk. The X button is to look backwards. To use this effectively, you should find a way to comfortably hold A with your right thumb while still being able to press X with your right thumb. 
Drifting is the most important driving mechanic in this game. You can get a sharp return by holding the direction you want to go and then hold the R or ZR button. This begins a drift. If you drift for long enough, sparks will build up under your tires. By releasing the R button, you will get a small speed boost, called a mini turbo. If you hold the drift longer, you will go from blue sparks to orange to purple and each color change means you will get a longer lasting mini turbo. I refer to these by color, but they are also called mini turbo, super mini turbo, and ultra mini turbo. Drifting and mini turbos are the most important driving mechanics in this game, so make sure you are drifting around every single turn to get used to how this controls. The R button is also used to do a trick at certain times. When going off a ramp, press the R button near the peak of the ramp to do a trick. This gives you a speed boost once you land. You should be trying to trick off of pretty much every single thing that makes you leave the ground, because most of the time you will be allowed to trick. Instead of using the R button to trick, you can also shake your controller, even if you have motion controls turned off. This can help you get tricks on regions of a track where it is harder to time the R press. You can also trick off of blue glider panels. Once you are in a glider, you fly above the track instead of driving on the ground. You can still move left and right, but you can also move up and down. You have to hold down to go up, and hold up to go down. If this feels weird to you, think about it like you're leaning back or leaning forward. For beginners, you'll spend most of your race only using A to accelerate, R to drift and trick, and L to use items. For now, you can mostly ignore B to break and X to look backwards, but they are both very important at higher levels, which of course we will cover later in this guide. You have now earned your Mario Kart driver's license. You can now go to Grand Prix to race against the computers. If you have a decent handle on this game, go for 150cc. This is the standard game mode, with 100cc being slower and 50cc being even slower. Mirror mode flips all the tracks left and right, so you'll forget where to go, and 200cc is so ridiculously fast that you'll constantly need to hit the brakes. It can be loads of fun, but not when you're first starting. Once you're on the track, try to figure out how to take turns tightly. The path you take through the track is called a racing line, and having a good line versus a bad line makes a huge difference. And keep in mind that sometimes you'll want to sacrifice a good line in order to charge a higher level mini turbo. This kind of decision making is what makes Mario Kart's drifting mechanic so interesting. One of the first things you'll notice is coins on the track. Collecting these will help you unlock a random vehicle part, but in a race, they also help you go faster. You have a coin count, which can go up to 10, and you lose 3 coins if you get hit. Having 10 coins gives you about a 6% speed increase, or about 0.6% per coin. This may sound very small, but it does make a big difference. Over a 2 minute race, that's about 7 seconds faster with 10 coins, or almost 1 second faster for each coin you have. But that doesn't mean you should grab every coin, because you also lose time going out of your way for them. As a general rule, grab coins that are close to the optimal path until you have 10. A shortcut is another path through the track that is faster than the normal path. Most of the time you'll need a mushroom or some sort of speed item to take the shortcut, because you have to go over an off-road surface that slows you down like grass. But some shortcuts can be done without a mushroom. This is called a shroomless shortcut or a NISC, which stands for no item shortcut. If you're taking a mushroom shortcut, usually you just mushroom over the off-road. But some shortcuts require multiple mushrooms and need to be done differently if you only have one mushroom. And that either means taking a smaller version of the shortcut, or activating the mushroom after entering the off-road and hopping out at the end, because just a mushroom boost is not long enough. Most of the time you'll want to drift through a shortcut since they usually involve at least a slight turn, and the mushroom lets you stay at top speed during your drift for a free mini turbo at the end. Then there are the shroomless shortcuts, which are usually more difficult than the mushroom shortcuts. Most shroomless shortcuts involve a very precise movement, either to spend as little time as possible being slowed down by the off-road, or to leave the off-road in a mini turbo boost to quickly re-accelerate, or to hop over the off-road entirely. These boosts will not save as much time, but can be done even if you're in first place without a mushroom to extend your lead. We'll cover shroomless shortcut mechanics later on, but one thing you'll definitely want to know right now is if you ever get stuck in the off-road, make sure to spam R to keep hopping. This makes you go a bit faster because you spend as little time as possible with your tires touching the off-road. If you want to see all the important shortcuts on a particular track, I'm currently working on a short video series that will cover all of them, and I'm always taking requests for more. Just search, for example, Donut Plane Shortcuts in the YouTube search bar and I may have a video on it. 
And I cannot stress this enough, but if there's anything you take away from this guide, please let it be this. The number one thing that 